this is Robert Olson, the, the director of museum? Yeah, I'm a director of a car museum in Chicago. Yep. Our museum is called Claremont Collections. That's Claremont with a K. And uh, we have a selection of about 350 cars in Chicago. The Golden Sahara II yep. being one of our recent uh, acquisitions. Uh, give you a quick hit on the museum. A 93-year-old World War II veteran owns the museum and uh, we just started a not-for-profit and want to get the word out uh, by sharing some of our collection. That's awesome. Well, tell me about the, the reason for the uh, Golden Sahara II. What's, what's the story behind it? So my understanding with the history on the Golden Sahara is the vehicle itself is a 1953 Lincoln Capri. And George Barris was the original owner. Yep. And he was driving the vehicle and was involved in an accident with a truck where the upper part of his uh, Lincoln Capri was damaged. And that was the inspiration to customize the car. Didn't want to trash the car, it was less exactly. than a year old. Yep. So George created the Golden Sahara, and he did that and had an associate, friend, uh, business associate named Jim Street. Jim Street ended up purchasing the vehicle, and about three years later did some more innovation, more customization on the car, slightly altered the front end, uh, changed the uh, T-tops to a, uh, an open top roll bar, yep. um, split the fins in the back, the original uh, end of the car, you know, changed slightly, and then added and integrated some more features. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that. Um, some of the features on the Golden Sahara included an automatic starter, which today we might say, well, you know, automatic starter. Well, in order to get an automatic starter to work on a car back in the day, they took a television, Zenith Space Command television, and removed the remote control system from the TV yep. and integrated it into the car. So instead of pressing on, off, or volume up or down, those buttons now gave new commands. Start the vehicle, kill the switch. Open the door. Open the door, yep. open the trunk. This was mind blowing to the crowds back in the late 50s. You know, most people didn't even have a TV set, let alone one with a remote control. Exactly. Um, the interest, another interesting part of the car, and what's eye-popping, is the fact that the vehicle had something called a glass slipper or a neothane rubber tire. And back in the late 50s, going into the early 60s, Goodyear uh, had a prototype tire. And it never went into retail production, but they did test it. And I think the, the tire ended up in about 112 different countries. Uh, neothane rubber, uh, when poured the right way, has a transparency to it. So they would tint the tire, wrap a metal band with 12 volt DC bulbs <laughs> around the tire and illuminate the tire. And the tire could spin while it was lit. They used a uh, slip ring system similar to uh, what's in a steering wheel. Yep. And uh, these, these cars, you know, they, they were eye popping. Uh, the performance on the tire, I don't think it ever met the standard or a full retail, uh, you know, production and, yep. and to be safe. I think you could do about 45 miles an hour on that tire. The owner, Jim Street, previous owner of the vehicle, had the vehicle toward the United States going from dealership to dealership on behalf of Goodyear. Uh, the crowds, again, that they, he attracted were, were unbelievable. The crowds here are unbelievable. 10 deep though back then because people had never seen anything as such. Uh, car disappears for 45 years. Really didn't disappear, it was in Jim's collection. Jim wasn't showing it anymore. Uh, Jim passed away and his estate went up for sale and several of his vehicles were sold at Mecham auctions. And uh, through our contact at Meekum, they put us in, in the know that this vehicle would be available. And when we bought it, we paid about 350,000 for the car. And it was in an as-is condition. Uh, the paint, the original paint, I've heard different stories from the lacquer to actually the, the organic material that may or may not have been used in the paint mixture. The vehicle, when it came to us, it actually looked gold. Started out pearl, but because of the ultraviolet light yep. and, and the chemistry of the paint, it actually turned. Now it looked antique, gold, and it kind of had a neat look to it, but it was so degraded it needed to be restored. And when we did that, uh, we turned it back to its original pearl color, uh, had the uh, metal gold plated. Uh, some of it uh, 
you know, it, it, it's an older car. It's not a total resto, and it could never be because it has etching in there and handwritten, you know, just, just things that we can never honestly recreate. We wouldn't want to buff them out. So it, it, it's eye-popping, it's innovative, and uh, it's something that no one else has. Oh, that's awesome. Tell me about these antennas on the front. All right, so again, with innovation and Jim Street, the owner, he actually toyed around with the idea of having an automatic braking system. So if you pulled in and the car went to a certain point, he even gave demonstrations as to how the vehicle uh, could roll out. And uh, in 1962, he was on the television show, I've Got a Secret. Yep. And he was demonstrating the capability of the car. Now, I think about 90% of uh, what he represented was, was true. And the other 10% might have been a little showmanship. Yeah, a <laughs> little bit of showmanship. But the idea of having these features in the car, I mean, we are realizing these ideas today. Yeah, they were exactly. cutting edge back then. Today, there's something we expect. Yep. And uh, if you think about this, autonomy. Uh, Tesla's having um, some challenges, but some successes. Yep. With an automated vehicle, driverless vehicles. Think about a car that's driving and when it accelerates, the tires turn green. Yep. Puts you in the know of what the vehicle is doing. Uh, if the brakes are, are, are affected, maybe it's car tires turn red. Yep. So these that's things crazy. are real. They are real. Yep. I'll tell you one thing I liked about it. I watched a couple videos on it last night. Is um, the blinker light, actually the tires back then, the, the tire would blink. That was pretty neat. Correct. So the, you know, there's an outer hub on the tire and we're gonna get into it, we'll show you, do a little walkthrough. Uh, the, the tires do blink, or the outer hub can blink. Yep. Uh, now, currently, we poured these tires in the same, very similar uh, material, neothane rubber. Uh, Goodyear did them, we embedded uh, LED lights this time instead of using a traditional yep. ball, because it only made more sense. And the tires are actually cast solid. So yep. these tires each oh, weigh okay. about 150 pounds. So it's uh, like a four-lift tire. It's like, a, exactly. I so these, these durability, you know, it's, it's probably a 10 out of a 10. Yep. Uh, whether we want to drive them or not on them is another story because we want these babies to last for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of the features, we're talking about 24 karat gold plating, uh, a pearl essence uh, paint that originally had an organic compound in it, uh, the, the idea of having an, an automatic braking system in the vehicle, an auto starter, pop it doors even. It's embedded uh, with a nine inch uh, television set actually in the dashboard. Yep. And uh, currently we run a loop of a video. I was able to get a video to work on the original black and white TV of Mr. Jim Street demonstrating the vehicle with his wife, who was Miss Florida, uh, uh, yep. demonstrating all I the features. I believe that's one of the ones I've seen. Yeah, so in, in, I put all this stuff, uh, if you want to see the vehicle driven, I actually got the got images of me driving the vehicle around the Claremont parking lot. Yep. Not with the neothane tires, because yeah, we don't want to trash them, yep. but you can see how the vehicle rides and how long the vehicle is. It's, it's near 18 feet, and uh, it has a lower clearance because of the skirts on the side. On the rear of the vehicle, there's actually small wheels mounted. So originally when they would unload the vehicle on a ramp, the small wheels yep. would engage and you wouldn't bottom out and scratch the back yep. bumper. No air no, That's exactly it. So when you think about it again, all the innovation, jumping back in the time machine and going back to the mid 50s, it just blew people's minds. So how long ago was it? What year did y'all did y'all buy it? March March 2018. We purchased the vehicle. Really? And I'll tell you this much: we restored it, and the, the vehicle ended up getting a little bit of damage, which caused us to do another restoration. Really? Yeah. So we it, it actually been improved twice. Uh, the original features are all in place. The electronics are all located in the trunk. Uh, we choose not to. Uh, engage some of them now, yep. you know, because uh, we don't want to. We don't want to fire all those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all these things work, you know, with inverters and converters yep. and, and dual batteries and, and, and charging mechanisms. Uh, between Barris and Street, they took things that typically were not in cars back then yeah, and brought them, them yep. brought them into the vehicle. Exactly. So that, you know, they didn't invent the, the, the mechanism to change the channel, but they brought it into a car. Yep. You know, that simple maneuver, that simple uh, head fake or whatever, it it, it really. It really made uh, uh, us realize today, you know, what what could be possible. Yep. So so this car, 
you've done, you've, you've met Larry. Yes. So this car, he built his car off of pictures of this car. So what he, and it was still in storage when he built that car. So I, based on what I see uh, in Larry, uh, who Larry's design, yep. he, he's an excellent builder. Uh, I think a lot of his platform came off the original design of the Golden Sahara. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, the two-top. <laughs> Correct. Exactly. So on this vehicle, when it became the Golden Sahara 2, they added an extra uh, gold skirt on the front of the car, right. gold plating on the side uh, uh, of the wall. Larry, uh, Hudo Larry's car does not have that. That's right. Uh, I think they, I, if I'm not mistaken, Hudo also has a split uh, tail on his, but I'm not sure. Yep. But yeah, so I, I believe that he was channeling the Golden Sahara one, and I think he used some of his own creativity. Oh yeah, he did. To, you know, the interior is a little different. A little you know, different. Yeah, yeah. So is that the original interior, or did y'all redo it? Too? We we actually did redid the interior from the car sitting in a, even though it was protected in a, a damp garage. Yeah. I know you can get some chemicals that possibly could could uh, have, have maybe saved material, yeah. but it was degrading you over the life of it. it. And it fell yes, and it, and it had a funk on there that you know yep. you didn't want to deal with. And but we did get that that era of pattern um, uh, of what would be true to that. It looks exactly. Y'all done an excellent job. Yeah. So the running gear is exactly the same as it was before. Pretty much yes. Yeah. And, and the, the other part that I want to mention is uh, we're going to go through it, but it has a detachable steering wheel. Yep. You say, well, how, how the hell do you steer the car? Well, there's a center unitrol. You press it forward, you accelerate. You pull it backwards, you brake. You push it to the left, the steering wheel turns left. Yep. You push it to the right. So there was... So basically that's the first joystick ever. Kind of, kind of like a joystick, yep. correct. So when I look at the car, everyone goes, ooh, that's kind of like the Jetsons. Yep. And I look at the car and I say, I'm looking at the individual part, and I go, man, that looks like something that belongs in an airplane. Yep. You know, and again, and, and that, you're exactly right. Yeah. So what? So, did they have the original transmission? How did they do that? Everything's original. That, that was a, and, and and someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but the car was represented to have a super horsepower 525 horse engine in it. It doesn't. It has a stock 1953 Lincoln Capri engine. Yep. That's what this is. The Lincoln Capri chassis, yep. you know, and base. And uh, Barris uh, also used the Lincoln as a uh, base model of Futura for the Batmobile. Yep. And I challenge everyone, visualize, picture this car black. It looks like yep, you're exactly right. Batmobile's daddy. Yep. You know, so... And, that, and, that, and that's good. It just shows that uh, there was consistency and vision and in, in, improvising. So how long did it take them, I guess, the second deal to restore? I mean, to, to build it the first time. So the first time, after I think, the T-Tops. After the T-Tops, I, I believe the second wrestler was done in about 56. Okay. Right around 1956. And then uh, the vehicle was touring thereafter yep. so again it was on oh it was actually in a, it was in a movie cinder fellow with jerry yep. lewis so yeah, it, it was a it. movie car a show car a futuristic car yep. a great marketing tool you know for goodyear again yep so and it does not have any top down at all no top now the, the tops were removed during that resto uh, instead of having a flat bar that went across with two open spaces where almost you you would fold up the tops almost like, yep. a, like a wing a gold yep. wing, Go wing yep. uh, this one has a v design it was touted as a roll bar i don't want to roll in this <laughs> yeah, you know this baby um, i've never seen anything like it it blows my mind i'm 50 years old and it blows my mind that this was done before i was born you know, basically six years old, right? Correct, correct. Sixty years old, the 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 stuff that come out of these these Re guys. Really, mind. they were dreaming. They yeah. were they were they were dreaming, and they yeah. made it happen. So now let everybody know where they can check out the car at, or where they can find it on the way over, come see it in person. Well, if you're at SEMA, we're at the Kelsey Tire Boat. Kelsey was gracious enough to have us here. And Kelsey Tires makes the Goodyear products from 1920 to 1980. The car's home. Is at the Claremont Collections in Chicago. It's at a car museum with 350 uh, unbelievable, eclectic, and uh, a one of a kind. And yeah, I gotta come see that. Really cool vehicles. But we are in Chicago, we're in the city. Claremont Collections, Claremont with a K, Collections with a K. And if you check us out on YouTube or Facebook, we'll put it on the screen. We post some uh, really good uh, uh, videos that we uh, like to share.